Next, we will hear from Susan Toller, the Executive Director of the Florida Blue Foundation, the philanthropic affiliate of Florida Blue. She is also the Executive Director of Corporate Social Responsibility for Florida Blue and has responsibility for the company's philanthropic strategy. We're so grateful to have Susan here with us today to share a health plan and foundation perspective on this topic. Susan? Thank you, Catherine. And um, again, thank you to Nickum and to Dr. Clayton and Dr. Carroll. Um, you really set me up nicely to talk about what our health plan has done. Um, there's a lot of uh, connection into what you talked about. I'm really honored to be part of this conversation. Um, Ryan, will you pro progress the slide, please? First, a quick of who we are. Um, GuideWell is a health solutions company that is a um, national company. We, um, us and our affiliated companies, um, employ more than 18,000 folks and serve more than 46 million people in 45 states, um, including Puerto Rico. Um, Florida Blue is part of GuideWell. Um, Florida Blue is the Blue Cross and Blue Shield plan for the state of Florida. And um, we are the leading health insurance company here. Um, the Florida Blue Foundation is our private corporate foundation. We were founded in 2001. And um, next slide, Ryan. Our mission um, is to connect um, to our GuideWell corporate social responsibility work, as well as our ESG, environmental, social, and governance. I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, and we, we talk about it in terms of social impact. So um, just like Guidewell's mission to help people and communities achieve better health, um, that is the work of our foundation and our CSR work as well. Next slide, Ryan. How do we think about these, these issues at Guidewell? Um, again, like I said, if you think about our social impact and um, what is the value or the imperative that we have um, in the social space, the environmental space, as well as governance and our inclusive business practices. Um, when you talk about holistic health, we believe that physical health and mental health go hand in hand. Um, again, Dr. Clayton and Dr. Carroll kind of reinforced that. Um, and when you think about the social determinants of health um, that really um, dictate most of your um, healthy life and um, your lifestyle, um, that's where we're trying to find, again, this intersection. Um, we do have um, a role in environmental sustainability, um, and um, I'll get to that in a second. But um, you know, we know that uh, we can play a role as a corporation to be environmentally responsible. Um, throughout our operations as well. So we think about this work, again, kind of this ESG framework. Next slide, Ryan. We do have focus areas for our uh, philanthropy as well as our CSR strategies. And back in 2020, right before the pandemic, um, we aligned to these three drivers of health. They are food security, health equity, and mental well-being. Um, they were critical issues then, but now that we're through the pandemic, um, two years later, uh, these three have really proven to be even more critical areas of focus for us. And again, I think Dr. Clayton talked about um, food and the issues that climate um, can have an impact um, on food and food security. Um, Dr. Carroll talked about um, equity, and um, we know that a person, um, your life is often dictated by the zip code that you are born in. Um, so if there are you know, climate issues or environmental issues with that, and that causes uh, challenges as well. And the mental well-being is what we're gonna talk about today. Next slide, Ryan, please. Um, going back to our ESG and our work with um, the environment and the importance of sustainability, I, um, at first glance, you might say, well, what can a health insurance company do for the environment? 
right? Um, you don't make something, you don't manufacture things, right? So we have gotten really creative. We have an amazing corporate services team and um, really focused in on what we can do in the sustainability space as a business. Um, we have championed solar power. Our headquarters are in Jacksonville, Florida, and we are committed to go 100% solar in our buildings. We have a, a project with the Jacksonville Electric Authority. We're the first company to do that. Um, improving our water management, all of our retention ponds and the way we water our property um, is all reclaimed water 100%. Cutting food waste, um, working with our um, food service providers and um, how we eliminate um, extra food. And I'm reducing paper waste. Again, you would think, well, gosh, we've been at home for two years. We haven't used any paper. But as you know, insurance regulations, there's a lot of paper that needs to be shared with members and providers and uh, vendors and our partners and the like that are regulated. So we're encouraging people to use um, electronic submission and um, electronic records as much as possible. Next slide, Ryan. So um, how do we show up with this intersection between climate change and mental health? Um, you know, to be honest, we have not set out a strategy that said we're going to go do that, right? And how do we do it? Um, so when we talked about this issue with Nickum, um, we really talk, thought about it in the space of our disaster relief efforts. And again, Dr. Clayton and Dr. Carroll talked about that, um, how that's been I'm not gonna say low hanging fruit, but that's been a way that um, we and other organizations can plug in and collaborate with other partners. Um, you heard them say Florida, obviously that's our largest state where we operate um, as Florida Blue and as Guidewell. And um, Florida has its own unique challenges in its weather and um, being a peninsula, uh, being surrounded by water everywhere and lots of sunshine, right? Um, and lots of development, mind you. Um, thousand, you know, a thousand people move to Florida a day, give or take. So um, all of those pose unique challenges to our state. Um, they mentioned the Red Cross. We have a long time partnership and strong partnership with the American Red Cross. And um, when uh, both before disasters and during and after a disaster. Um, you can see that 30% of those Red Cross cases seek help with mental health after a disaster. And um, some of our support for them um, has gone to help with that issue. Um, remember the Surfside condo collapse last year in Broward County, um, the Champlain Towers, horrible, tragic disaster. Um, some have said, that it was exacerbated by sea level rise and by you know the pounding waves and erosion um, on the beach in Broward County. Um, we knew that that not only had a major physical toll um, on that community, but also a mental one as well. And so we joined forces with about 30 other non uh, nonprofits and organizations to create a mental health collaborative down there that still um, is working today um, with both the survivors and the victims um, and the community. During Hurricane Michael that affected our panhandle, our beautiful panhandle, um, badly a few years ago, um, the schools were really impacted. Schools had to be closed and um, there were a lot of issues. So we partnered with the Consortium of Florida educational foundations. Um, each county in our state has a school district and those school districts have a public found education foundation attached and it's that group. Um, and we really worked with them to provide mental health training to school employees and again, continue to, to work with them. Um, in times of these disasters and, and others, um, we have our mental health partner is New Directions, that's our behavioral health company. And um, they have often um, stood up a 24-hour hotline that anyone can call. You don't just have to be a member um, to just talk with someone. Um, and we have found that uh, really beneficial for people. Sometimes you just need you know, someone to listen and talk to in times of a disaster or things happening. Um, so we've um, found that that's been very effective. Next slide, Ryan. 
We do um, with our three drivers of health, as I said, our mental well-being grants. Um, we give those annually through our foundation through a competitive RFP process. Um, the next one, the deadline to apply is April 15th. So if you work in Florida and you work in this space of mental well-being, uh, please go to our website, floridabluefoundation.com, and take a look at those applications. Um, these are our partners from last year's grant program. I um, mean, again, if you said how many of those relate to climate change, probably none, but we're trying to strengthen the mental health uh, system, right? And we're trying to create that infrastructure. So as like our other speakers said, you need some, uh, you need that infrastructure built um, so that you can be there for people when they need it. Next slide, Ryan. Um, just some results from our grants, uh, present and past. Uh, we do, as a you know foundation, um, take um, measuring our impact seriously in our grantees. We have a robust evaluation process, and you can see some of the results that we've had. Um, you know, I think it's it will be interesting as we talk about climate change in the future, um, what those outcomes and metrics will be, how we will know that we're being successful in this space. Again, that's industry-wide, not just unique to us. Next slide, Ryan. Um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this, but just to say, you know, um, we think about our members, um, we think about our employees, and we think about our community. And um, with our employees, we have a program called Lift by Guidewell. It's an employee assistance fund. Lots of companies offer these. Um, and that can be short-term assistance to employees in times of financial hardship. Often it is disasters or things that have happened um, to their home um, or property. And um, since that program began in 2016, we've given more than 2,800 grants, totaling $2.8 million to our employees in need. Next slide, Ryan, please. Finally, I'd like to invite you um, to our next Community Health Symposium and our Sapphire Awards. It's May 4th and 5th. Um, it is for everybody. Um, you don't have to live in Florida. You don't have to work for a nonprofit. Um, it's a great discussion on community health. Um, we are focusing on health equity, but again, lots of topics and great uh, speakers, both nationally in the state and locally. Um, so we encourage you to come. It is in Orlando. Um, again, you can go to our website, floridabluefoundation.com to register, and um, we would love to see you there. Thank you so much. Thank you, Susan, for highlighting Florida Blue and Florida Blue Foundation's leadership to support climate resilience.